thanks for staying with us on Africa Independent Television AIT and welcome to the signature show. I'm Mwabuz Njoko and this Sunday I want to begin by expressing my utmost frustration with myself and my colleagues in the media for our failure to remain with a story of great national importance until it is resolved. We get easily distracted and we begin to pursue other things and celebrate new stories, no matter what happens. Now, in this country, a few months ago, some military personnel pursued and killed three undercover police operatives and a civilian who had successfully apprehended a kidnapped kingpin who goes by the name Wadume along the E.B. Jalingu Road in Taraba State. Now, they went ahead, released him, cut his handcuffs off, and then he went away. Now, in a follow-up operation, which in Nigeria police should be celebrated, detectives from the force pinned the fleeing suspect down and rearrested him. Then he began to sing like a canary, detailing how he was operating hands in glove with some police officers and some military op op uh, officers in his gun running and kidnap operations. Now, and the inter-force panel set up by President Muhammad Buhari to dig into the details of this national shock has since concluded its assignment, submitted its report, and indicted some officers both in the military and in the police force. The police have since concluded their investigations and indicted some officers and are prepared to take Wadume and those indicted to court. However, the military is hedging, refusing to release its indicted officers for prosecution in a kind of institutional protectionism and outright impunity. Now, that is a question. If these people are not prosecuted, what, do we, what moral fiber do we have to talk about cultists, pirates, kidnappers, headsmen, killer, killer headsmen, or even elements of Boko Haram. After all, all these killings arise from the same philosophy. The law cannot do anything to me if I have enough means of violence. Is that the kind of society we want? Now, now talking about society that we want, the Inspector General of Police should please take more than a passing interest in this story about citizen F.A. Ifier, a 300-level student of civil engineering of the State University. Now, reports indicate that he was isolated from among passengers in a commercial bus, and the police who isolated him went through his phone and suddenly declared him a fraudster. They handcuffed him and took him to the Ekta police station. And when they went through his phone thoroughly, they saw an alert, a bank alert, for about 200,000 naira. And they took him to a bank and they would, he withdrew 150,000 naira, which was part of his school fees. This Peter General of Police, you please appreciate that since many of us advocate that the police should be the prime agency for internal security, stories like this undermine the confidence and trust of all of us. Now, still on matters of security, the Department of State, Secure, State Services says Colonel Sambo Dasiki, Ibrahim Ezagzaki, and Showore, the man behind Revolution Now, asked the agency to keep them in their custody. Honestly, I must wonder why we in the media are making so much noise about human rights when these Nigerians voluntarily ran to DSS for secure comfort and safety. Except for me to ask the question, did any courts ask these gentlemen to go home? The answer is in the wind. In subsequent editions of this program, we are going to tackle the matter of the hate speak bill and how the nation and our power mongers are pushing all of us to something against 2023. Now, for this Sunday, so much is happening in the Bayasa and Kugi governorship elections. People being arrested, kidnappings going on, 2015 ballot papers being shared out, 
some thugs saying that journalists and observers should not enter in their areas. As we're talking now, in Opolo area of Yenegoa in Bayesa State, three people are said to have been shot by thugs who had earlier turned back journalists and election observers, warning that those daring them may not live to tell the story. As we're putting this program together, angry women voters in that Opolo area were protesting why gunmen were reported to have snatched election materials in some wards in Southern Ojo. Now, please, to calm your anxiety over these developments in these two elections, let's bring in a little bit of comic relief. This is our social media watch. <music> Come on, rice, David. Come on, rice. Where well, am I Come on, rice. <laughs> As I tell you this thing, you go pull and cover, but you can't do go office. Oh, yeah, come on, rice. Come on, rice. What is that, rice? All the bread, rice. Ah. That is first bread. <laughs> Second bread. Come on, rice. Come on. Oh, yeah, tear me there. See. Come, go open and that thing where you remove. Oh, yeah, tear up. Tear the waiting there inside. Eh, tear up. No, tear, tear around, just tear around. Tear around. I said tear around. Oh, yeah. Tear around. Oh, yeah, go around for ground. Uh -huh. Oh, yeah, come on the other one with it. Oh, yeah, no, no, no it's okay. Do, Remove the land on with it inside. Ah. Ah. Rice. Yeah. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Everything now. This one, maybe rice. You think I did play with you? Yeah, maybe rice. Oh, yeah, come, come on the rice. Come on down with your head first. <laughs> Guys, just let her come out it. This is not a joking matter. Is that rice? That rice. And the woman being go eat this rice. Yes. And they go say some know they work. And some know they work the rice before they eat. Oh yeah, oh yeah, now make woman be see. When they say customs know they work. Member from Katsina State representing Sendamu Meadu Andora. Thank you very much, Sada, for raising this observation. So I came back yesterday from Daura. I was ambushed by the communities there due to the hardship they are facing there, due to this one closure of the border and the 20 kilometers instruction given by custom. From Daura to Congolam, that's the border, international border. It's 18 kilometers. From Mr. President's house, living home, his bedroom, to the border, is just 13 kilometers. That's a very good point there. We all know the borders are closed, but they still allow things to go in and out. I'm a living witness, and I stand to be corrected. Therefore, yesterday, I was there around 1 a.m. Nobody knows. I saw what they are doing. So, sir, the custom needs to be invited here, and they need to be questioned. This is National Assembly. We need to know what is going to happen before you take any instructions, such very weighty orders to shut down the border, 20 kilometers. And my last local government, which is Meadua, is zero kilometers with Niger. I was there, my network service was orange. That means I'm not in Nigeria. So you see the kind of interweaving we have with them. So please. 
I need a support from each and every member. Things are happening in the border. That's why they are closed, they are not closed. They pay each car in the night to go in and each car in the night to come in from Niger. We should not deceive ourselves. If we want to do the right thing, let's do it. If we are not going to, let's allow it. Thank you very much. Briefly, back to the election. Reports are indicating that the APC deputy governorship candidate in Bayelsa State has won in his ward, while journalists have been attacked in the Yetore area of Kogi State. Well, now to our conversation for this Sunday. What are the implications of the many court cases preceding these two elections? We spoke with James Ubeda, an Abuja-based lawyer. Well, let me welcome you to the conversation segment of the Signature Show. You already know that yesterday, Saturday, the 16th of November, the Kogi and Baeza governorship elections took place. Of course, by this time, we are beginning to get the feel of what the outcome of that or those elections are likely to be with the results trickling in. But before the elections took place on Saturday, there were a number of developments. First, there were the legal developments, and then there were the violence developments. Now, in this part of our conversation this, this Sunday, we are going to deal first with the legal developments. Now, what are the legal developments? In the case of Bayes Estate, a number of cases, a number of court cases were instituted. The first, and which I think is more contentious, is the case against the candidature of the deputy governorship candidate of the All Progressive Congress APC in that election. A court in Abuja, a federal high court in Abuja, ruled that he was not qualified for that election on account of a number of irregularities in his educational documents. Of course, there are other cases. Uh, Iyenegua High Court also had disqualified the governorship candidate Leo outright. But the Court of Appeal in Port Harcourt on Thursday had ruled that that matter should be left the way it is and the man should proceed to election. In the case of Kogi State, the candidate of the LDP, Natasha, had gone to court challenging the qualification, not educational, the character, person qualification of Yahya Bello as the candidate of the APC. He, she said, she contended that he was not a fit and proper person to contest that election. These throw up a number of legal challenges. And this afternoon, I have joining me James Ubeda. James Ubeda is a lawyer based in Abuja. James, can I welcome you to this conversation segment of the show? Thank you very much, sir. Now, as you just heard me, yes. let us start from the most contentious. A federal high court in Abuja had ruled that the deputy governorship candidate of APC in Bayelsa State had problems with his educational qualification, and therefore he was not qualified to run 
In other words, removed him from the ticket. Let me start this way. What does the Constitution and what does the Electoral Act provide in respect of the candidature of a political party in a governorship, in a governorship contest? Oh, thank you very much, sir, for having me. Um, a lot of court orders, court injunctions here and there. Um, but as, as I said, the election has come and um, it has. We are expecting the results. The results now has come and gone. Um, talking about the deputy um, running mate of APC governorship um, candidate in Bayelsa State, the law itself that our constitution, our extant constitution, section 180, 186 says there shall be for every state a deputy. Governor. There's a 187 now states that for a governor to be validly nominated or validly, let's say, call it elected in an election, he must have nominated a running mate that will run with him for him to be validly. So, in this case, if a court has said the deputy governor is not qualified based on information given even under oath and all that and disqualified him, then um, at best, the, the governor of Bielsa, um, APC candidate, yes. is more or less um, standing on one foot, clearly. And um, the implication here, you know, in the, just two days before this same election, yes. another court, you know, there have been contention yes. between Leon, the, de the governor, and Enik and uh, Lokobiri, who, who is also a member of APC. APC. He took this same matter to another court in Yanagua, a federal high court too, another justice, Ian Jane also gave another verdict. Though what he took to court was saying that he should be the validly person standing for the party and yes, not, not Leon. Leon. But what the court surprisingly gave there, they gave another thing that was not even what they prayed for. The court said, that even APC does not have a candidate as far as the concern for that election. Instead, he did not bring any Ken, neither did he even say Leon. They just say there's no. Yeah, but, but, but basically, on the, 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 the court order from Abuja, which says the deputy okay. is not validly. Just, just a comment. Yes, the the, the Yenegra court said that the process that produced Leon disobeyed even the party guidelines, and therefore the outcome was a nullity. Yes, that is what all in encompassing the judgment of the court, the federal court in Yanagua. But in all, it says, in short, APC does not have a candidate stand. And even NAK and his legal team were so confused as ah, but still, that is still not um, the issue here. But as it is, um, Leon proceeded to a court of appeal also in in Port Harcourt. And the court of appeal graciously, because it was an, uh, an ex party, and gave that no. Everything should stand that Leon still remains the candidate that INEC should not remove, remove his name, his name from, the from the ballot and um, it should go on. But let me just add one quickly. His name is not on the ballot. If you notice the um, the commissioner Okoye, the in charge of um, education, yes. told on air said what they put is just the political parties. You don't the part the party the, the, the candidate's the name candidate. does not come. So it's the political party's name. So um, but still the court said it should still stand as the candidate of uh, so, as it is, Leon is standing. But the implication here is, if Leon, the election still as, comes out in favor of APC, having stood as a sole candidate without a deputy, the implication here is perhaps the deputy has gone on appeal, which we don't know for now. But I know that is it, or the premise they still went ahead. Because if, by the grace of God, the appeal comes, in favor of the deputy that, that ordinarily the deputy should, should not have been, have been disqualified. disqualified. Then the ticket and is complete. Then the ticket is complete. And that's why they still went ahead. It's just like a game of chance now that let's see. Perhaps we still go and we'll win this election. Once the court of appeal upholds or um, uh, disqu um, yeah, upturned of what the trial court did, then they are home and drive. We are home and but drive. if that peak court still, still um, uphold what the, the trial court did, then, even if APC had won the election, 
then that election will not stand. Yeah, Ordinarily, yeah, it should yeah, just yeah. be like the Zamfara case. Uh, James, let me just ask you. Yeah. Can a political party, since INEC says that the candidate's picture or name is not on the ballot, but it's only the political party, does that imply that a party can go to a contest without a candidate? Is it feasible? Is it, is it feasible in law? Um, a party cannot go without a candidate. A party, although if you recall the case of Amechi and um, Omeya, where the court finally, the Supreme the Court gave, yes, that it is not the candidate. Good. It is the, the party, party that went into the election. That went into the election. But that one does not still erode the fact that a candidate should stand for a party. But in the event that that candidate is not qualified to have stood for that party, ordinarily the candidate will be replaced with another member of the party. So the party still, if the party wins the election, the party still stands as the winner of the election. At best, they'll go back to the primaries who, who the, the next, the next or just the same way it happened then in Kogi, who is the next f from the persons that won during the primaries? Uh, James, so, this throws up and the matter. Yes. Just in case. APC wins the election in Bayesa State. Just in case the appeal court or a higher court says that the judgment of the Abuja court disqualifying the deputy stands. Just in case APC wins that election with only the governorship candidate, two issues are likely to arise. One, is that victory that was won with an incomplete ticket, will it be valid? Two, can APC bring in a deputy candidate who was not on the ballot, who can be brought in post the election by virtue of the disqualification of the person whose name was there initially? Okay, the, the first angle to it, if APC wins, and the Court of Appeal now up will say that the deputy is disqualified, stands disqualified. Stands disqualified. Then whatever APC would have gotten at that election, it just be it's just a, a bag of wasted votes. It would now be like the case of Zamfara, where the the vote automatically it, it now means at that particular election APC had lost. So it will now go to the next highest political party, perhaps. PDP. This, I, James, I want to interrogate this further. Yes. This seems to create a confusion. Yes. If the Supreme Court says that it is not the individual who won the election, but the party. Now the party has won it. And just by virtue of an incomplete ticket, you take it away from, from that party. Isn't it a contradiction in law? No, it is not a contradiction. If, in this case, if the party won, yes. that means it, perhaps the party and the candidate are in proper footing as at the time the party won. But in this case, the party, the candidates of the party are not in proper footings. So they are not standing properly. So you cannot come and claim what you did not stand properly. Had it been that the deputy and the governor, the governorship candidate are properly constituted to run for this election and they ran for the election and anything happens later, they can say, okay, the party, though the party APC won, but the two candidates are not um, qualified. So the party can substitute them for another candidate. But in this case, the deputy whose own stand was defective ab in issue. And thinking that the court of appeal will help the case for him to be properly considered. But since it was not now given in favor of the deputy, then it automatically states that APC never stood properly for that election. So it would have, at that point, you cannot say it's going to the party. Instead, it will go to the next, the next highest uh, political party that won during that election. So, but, but had it been the property were, were in place, the two, the, 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 the governor and, and the, the deputy, deputy were there clearly, but along the line, maybe something. But now it's somebody, it's just only one person. So it's defective from the beginning. The only thing that would have cured it would have been the Court of Appeals of turning what the trial court um, has decided on the deputy. In other words, really, APC in bias state in this election is taking a gamble. Yes, game of chance. The game of chance. And perhaps they are optimistic that 
the Court of Appeal might rule in their favor. And that's why I think Leon is still proceeding to, and that's why he proceeded through this election to see that, I we'll see once it is um, uh, obtained in our favor, then we are home and dry. But as I said, it might end up being a, a bag of wasted votes, just like the case of Zamfara. But unfortunately, optimism is not legalism. Uh, we hope that uh, APC in Bayesta State pursues his case and finds favor with the law. But there is also a situation in Kogi State. The candidate of the SDP, Natasha Akoti, went to court challenging the candidature of Yahya Bello in, that, in this election. And her grounds, one of her grounds was very simple, that Yahya Bello is not a fit and proper person to vote or to be voted for. Let me remind us that last week Sunday, we had a lawyer here in the studio yes. and we raised this matter where the chairman of the Independent National Electoral Commission, INEC, Professor uh, Mahmoud Yakubo, admitted openly that Yahya Bello, the candidate of APC in the Kogi election, infracted the law by registering two times. He registered in Abuja and registered in Lokoja. In other words, if this case goes through, goes to court as they have gone to court, and INEC remains a steady witness, INEC will bear witness that Yahya Bello infracted the law by registering two times. So Natasha has gone to court to say, look, a man who is disobeying the law and the consequence of that disobedience that you cannot vote if you were any ordinary person cannot go ahead and present himself in a contest of this nature. The court, the federal court, high court, has shifted this case to the 21st of November. Let me ask you, should the Federal High Court accepts that by registering two times, Yahya Bello as a candidate is not a fit and proper person to contest the election. What will be the consequence for his candidature? It's clear, very, very simple. If such um, decision comes from the court, then um, um, APC is candidate Abelo ceases to be the governor of the state and will now fall back to Damechi and um, Omeya's case, then the party would now be forced to look at the second highest during the primaries, which will take its position just the same way the late Prince Abubakar Aldo, God rest his soul, passed on. He, he fell on the most um, highest um, scorer during the primaries. So once the decision comes out like that, Yabelo ceases to be the governor of Kogi State, and it, it would devolve to the next highest um, person during the primaries. I, I, I require your legal education here. The INEC had said that it could not disqualify Yahya Bello because Yahya Bello enjoys immunity. Does the same immunity which he enjoys, because my, our guests last Sunday said that if Yahya Bello went into the street and shot somebody, nothing he could do about it because he's covered by immunity. He's a governor. Okay. Does the same immunity not cover him, therefore, in this contest? No, no, in this contest, as it is now, he's not, he's not contesting as a governor. He's, he's a contestant in this election. So the issue of immunity does not come up here now, in this instance. Yabelo, in this instance, is a governorship candidate of APC. And is not a governor of APC, as, as we said, is a contestant. So immunity does not cover him here. Also, INEC has said he has immunity, that's why they cannot do what they yes. And even recently, even in the case of Natasha that just came up, the INEC does not have the power to even disqualify a candidate. It's only the court that has that power. So in this case, it's before the court that has that power to do it. 
And adding to the fact that immunity does not translate here. You are talking about the candidates here. If weaknesses are brought forward and they converse and they come up with that, truly infracted and is not fit and proper to be there. And if, if the court so found, find out that at the tail end that he was not properly um, to be there, then the court can remove him. And as I said, the immunity does not apply here. I also take you to the case of um, Buari and uh, Atiku. If you notice, they came up with the whole idea of um, is a perjury and all. But if you notice, the legal, the legal team did not go in the way of say, Buari is a president and the immunity covers. Mm. Instead, they, look, they went to defending, to defend, that. to defend and asking them to even prove their case. So, and in all, it shows that at that point, they are talking about Buari, who is a contestant in, a, in an election, election, and not Buari, who the is president. a president that, that has immunity over his head. So, so oh, oh, James, my, my, my producer is giving me a sign, but that's a very important question I want to ask you. Yes, sir. These cases around these candidates and the entire process, how do they affect the credibility of this election? It's just a matter of opinion. How do these many cases? Because the voter is being is under siege. All manner of cases, doubts raised about candidature, doubts raised about even some parties taking part. There were a number of very what I may call stories we cannot we cannot confirm in the social media. The election will take place, it will not take place. And it's creating confusion in the manner of minds of the of the electorate. How does it? How do all these affect the credibility of this election? Um, talking about the credibility, I don't think it will affect the credibility. The election has come and has gone. What we are looking at is the results. But it is a normal thing in a normal civilized society that if you are not pleased with a particular process, you go to court. You don't you don't resort to self-help. And that is what most of the candidates are, um, we've seen so far have been doing. And, but don't forget the fact that, you know, politicians will always be politicians. Some people want to, some politicians want to drag on necessary things just to pull one or two persons down. But as I said, in as much as the court is there and the court is acting as an umpire, and as an umpire's umpire, I don't think it will affect the credibility of the election. The election, the tail end, the results will be fully blown out and we'll see. Why do our politicians seem to always go to the judiciary to resolve matters that can be resolved within their political party processes? It's all boiled down to trust and honesty. If you know, and another thing is everybody, most of the politicians are just thinking about myself, myself, I, 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 and not we. And that's why I see. Even within the same family, when I say family, the same political, you see people attacking themselves just because of selfish interest. Because if you have the collective interest of Nigeria as a whole, I don't think for every some issues that issues that you just sit down as one family, you trash it out. When something is wrong, you straighten it out. But you notice before you know somebody is running to get an injunction, is running to to stop this just because of your selfish interest. Just because of their selfish interests, but. All this contest is about serving the people. Let us hope that the outcome of the two elections in Bayesa and Kogi State will produce people who will serve the people and take the interests of the electorate as supreme. James, I'm very grateful for coming to the conversation. It's a pleasure, sir. Thank you well, very much. Well, that's a second segment of this conversation because I did say at the beginning that violence preceded the election in Kogi State and Bayesa on Saturday. What are the consequences of such situations? Gun battle to serve, that will be in our next conversation. Stay with us. Well, thank you. Our next guest was supposed to be Dr. Yakubu Shendam, former president National Youth Council of Nigeria. He, however, did not show up, and so we have to bring you right away a special report which is on violence in the run up to the Kogi Bayasa elections.
In monitoring events in the run-up to the Kogi and Bayesa state governorship elections, which took place on Saturday, November 16, 2019, two red flags were most prominent. The first is the plethora of court cases seeking to undermine or disqualify contenders in elections. And the second is the many incidences of violence the first red flag, apart from being a means to undermining opponents, was also a reflection of the absence of intra-party democracy in the political parties, which forced losers to approach the courts. In our interview this Sunday, we have tried to examine the booby traps with these court cases pose for the outcome of the elections. The February 23, 2019 general elections received very low marks as underperforming exercise would did little credit to Nigeria's democracy credentials. That election was also preceded by many court cases which created challenges for the Independent National Electoral Commission, INEC, and the candidates in that election. The many upturned results show that that election was anything but credible. There was not much Aine could do when politicians refused to play by the rule. The courts must therefore have to resolve the issues in contention. The second red flag, however, the violence which preceded the February election and has repeated itself in the current Kogi Bayesa State Governorship poll is a cause for concern. The Nigeria police and allied security agencies raised high expectations that lessons learned from the February exercise have informed a more robust and strategic response to the demands of the Kogi Bayesa election. However, prior to Saturday, the secretariat of one of the parties in Kogi state, the SDP, was raised by hoodlums sympathetic to one of the political parties. Arson is a criminal offense, and as of this Sunday, the police is not known to have arrested any suspects in that crime. The governorship candidate of the same LDP, Natasha Akbuti, who comes from the same senatorial district as the incumbent governor and expects considerable support from that zone, was manhandled by security operatives and prevented from taking part in a stakeholders meeting which was to discuss the rules of engagement in the exercise. This is apart from thugs being used to chase her away from campaigns in the area. More confounding is that masked armed men surrounded and attacked the hotel where the Oyo State Governor Shea Makinde, who is leading the PDP campaign in Kogi State, lodged. The police have since said that the masked armed men were security operatives acting on false information that thugs were holding meeting in that hotel. That operation raised two questions. One is whether the presence of a state governor in Kogi State with all his security details could be unknown to the police in Kogi State. And the second is whether personnel of the Nigeria police now operate like the Mujahideen in masks. The violence in Nembe Bayoste State two days to the election also added to the state of fear with violence created in the two states. In the case of Bayesa, lives were lost and campaign rallies disrupted. The situation on election day proper did not prove any markedly better. In the Kina area of Kogi State, it was a gunfight that, though, was brought to a firm control by the superior police firepower, however scared voters away. If these two factors, which contributed to undermine the credibility of the February election, still played up this significantly in the Bayesa Kogi governorship elections, then what has changed? If these contests are for public service, why must they stretch 
the fabric of social harmony. In the present circumstance, can the outcome of these two elections enjoy any moral approval from a society and people yearning for a leadership that emerges through their choice and that cares for them? These questions can only be answered by politicians whose actions or acquiescence produce situations such as this. Now let me thank you for joining us this Sunday. As always, I'm Wabuz in Joko. Good afternoon. Come on, come another corruption to read today. Now, here with the torchlight corruption matter for we country, anywhere where the day, anyhow, where they think do them. My name now, Ufuma Eguriasi. I beg now, who invent this word with them? They call empowerment itself. Now, which person carry and teach with politicians for we country? We're gonna need answer to this question. No? We're gonna need answer sharply as he get competition now where they happen for government and politicians for different different levels for this country. Hmm. Make a tell you now. When federal, state, or local government yarn say them get different empowerment program for women or for youth or for people when they get to work or the ones where kuku de shalish or this ones who programs the KKK for here and there, it'll be like public goat when nobody get them. If he lost to me. Nobody go find out. Now, so then they let these programs make it fail, fail come out. After it fail, finish, these politicians then go come appear with their own personal empowerment program. Then go join now with their name. Country people go see empowerment, then go they grateful to them. When they ask, they go say, ah, this man work well, well. Oh. And now so they go take the tank them for their campaign. They go they vote for them. If you never code where they go with this my yarn, just follow us, enter corruption story for today. Make yourself see as one empowerment they fail to help another empower empowerment to rise. If they happen for the National Assembly, oh. Hmm. From Monday, October 14, Justice A. Muhammad of Federal High Court for Abuja knock orders say make them seize 116 million naira. Will be money will come out from constituency projects where them award give Hamza Barrow and Ham Shaki Ventures Limited where them no do. Now, small and medium enterprise development agency of Nigeria, Smedan for short, now put money for the project for some federal lawmakers them. The project now to provide different empowerment programs for Ako Gombe State, to do some programs still put for Benue State, come still supply Okada, give them for Kiyawa, Jigawa State. But the contractors, Barao and Ham Shaki Venture Limited, no agree do the project after they don't collect money for them. The team will come straight past. Now say the agency Smedan come issue certificate, say them don't do the job. Well, as in any contractor, we no really finish work and in collect uh, certificates, they in finish the work. Then one, now be say something they wrong between the people, the contractor and the people we issue that certificate. Problem that there's a, there's something that is not being said. There's a realistic truth that is not being that that is not being said there. Yeah. So that's why they happen. Now be say once something like that happen. Contractor no finish job, then carry certificate given. Now be say 
the person will give and that certificate we know say the work no finish go give explanation why in give the certificate when the work never finish me as me, me as police will they give you work if you don't do the work i suppose you on top of your neck say guy read this work you never do this work well and contractor say we say collect work we don't do we don't do the work sir. Instead of getting your part of the blame to take there, because if me as politician give you work and you know do I'm as opposed to your neck, and you as contractor also is supposed to deliver the work. So now both of now, but majorly the the, the politician get the bigger share of the blame because the politician is supposed to make sure say the work they done before they come finalize every day or even the payment itself. They could give half payments when they finish the work, they give them the remaining one. Who give and those certificates? Was those certificates was it forged? Or, or was it the, the original certificate of which normal people that do it or normal procedures are being given? So if, for example, that the person were given the certificate, the person were given responsible, the person were supposed to be responsible, and the person were given the certificate. The Economic and Financial Crimes Commission, EFCC for short, don't move, enter the case, discover, say, the two companies, Barau and Hamshaki Ventures Limited, being collect certificates, say the job don't finish, Sake of them share the money with them, give them for the empowerment project with the lawmakers. When are their people supposed to benefit from this project? The main thing is say if EFCC fee probe every issue of all, all those kind of projects where they're not complete to know whether na, the money finish, where they need more money, but where still they within the range of the Amounts where they talk, say they go where they agree, say they will pay them for the contract. Not be say after person talk, say in go collect two billion for to, to execute a project, then a hey, collect the two billion, you know, finish and in constant come again, say may then give them another money. You see, say monkey and don't they resemble <laughs> human being and for the but for the situation whereby the person don't collect the money, spend the money, and I am be say. Anybody will chop waiting no belong to Ram. Go provide waiting no belong to Ram. If they don't take student action again about on one, others will continue. Because if I do something and I go scot free, or go give others leave out, or still say ah uh, that kind of thing and do see nobody top up, means I have to continue. But they need to top up their game in the sense that they need to make this adequate find adequate research. And stringent punishment, like correct punishment, needs to be on ground. People will say default, people will not do what they're supposed to do. When they say these people, they, they do, they, they give correct default. Then we say, just be like say, poor man steal Maggie, they burn them. Rich man steal money, they let them go. But when they say, we say, even if you steal Maggie and you steal million, you know, say, your, the kind of punishment you they receive, now even at the same time, you're only a big person. They go sit up now. They go sit up. They're not go they take uh, the law with levity. Some, punish, some, some other punishment, they will say, Apart from seizing their property, you close their accounts. So those people get multiple accounts, they get only other sources of livelihood. So they need to be something they say go go fix, go fix, catch them. When they say grab the bull, bull by the horn, they go fix, catch them by the horn. They will say they no go fix, they go make them cut all of these things that they do. For such politicians, I think uh, that the Nigeria president Buhari says that he wants to fight corruption and. And when you look around the situation of the things in this country, you haven't seen a sitting executive member being proved when he's serving. And when you want to fight a corruption, you checked, if you checked to this, uh, 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 for, all these, for uh, all, these, all these foreign countries, you find out that if you temper with their money and they give you projects you didn't execute, it, nothing like immunities. Immunity doesn't cover you from, from stealing from your people. But Nigerians we will wait till the person will serve his tenor and, and when the person and when the tenor exhausted will start proving the person. No. They should prove the person at, at his own service. Are you getting me? That's how to cable a corruption. So that those people that want to stay will take amendments. Are you getting me? Imagine you proving a governor for stealing when he's still in the seat. You know that you have crippled his political career. But not you waiting when he starts for his four terms. Are you getting me? In America, you can't try such. If the, if the FCC sends any corruption and they sense anything, they should cripple the person, they should prove the person when he's in office, not when the, his, 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 his tenor elapsed. The EFCC needs to investigate all these people, both the politicians and those people that are doing the contract. 
because they, 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 need to, they need to put things right. They need to be fair in, in carrying out their duties. Not just paper, paper work. They need, they need to be straightforward. The lawmakers with them point finger for say, them join share this money. Now, Herman Embe of Benue State, Benjamin Asoho, Udende Emmanuel, and OK Jeff. They still mention Abubakar Wambai and Anthony Madawate. A politician now, where if you say, him, you, you ask for project, they give you the project, you know as a beat time, you don't do anything, you call me again the second time to come ask for another one. Then I say the, 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 the politician, they use that contract and those projects to they make money. So in they just collect the money, but in no they ensure, say, the contract, say, the people will collect the work, then do it. And most times, some of those people, again, they, they come with person where they know. All this one are eye service. Now just eye service. Eye service. You, you do something, you say, no wish anything, but people go to the place, just, just based on... The level at which maybe say people get things rich because I know if you imagine for me now, one person will just come and give me like, uh, let me ask you like uh, rice now, I know we'll collect them. But you get some people say they will go me, so they will give them, they will collect them, you will know, say, okay, ah, you don't tell me they chop this one, you don't tell me they see this thing. So things like that, you go, go some communities, you go see politicians, they will just go share, we better give the youth. Now we better youth lead. They will call them, okay, leaders of tomorrow, you go school, you go to share, you go to share place, give them for school. Or all those boards, you go not go say they go to share place for the student for school. That means the teacher say me they come up for school, me they go to beg, me they go to do all those kind of things. But you go, in, they need to do things that we say go make the youth they empowered. Things that we say at least go they beneficiary to these people. Like imagine one, I know we call them of university, but first class graduates they give a mug, cup. Which one is that? First class graduates will okay, okay, sponsor in in MSU or something we say go they vibe for the for that person. They give a things that we say no they useful. Well, things like that, you know they're okay, you know they're okay. But they need to wake up. They need to wake up and they need to top their game about these things. I think uh, that, that we the Nigerians, that, that we they do ourselves, you get? That we they do ourselves. For example, how can you give a, somebody a work? For example, if you want to start a project of a house and you, you have like 20 houses, you understand? And you give somebody a one project to execute. He didn't finish that one and he's coming back for look for more. You are you getting me? It's not decent, uh, it's not it's not it's not even uh, 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 it's not even uh, arguable. For my advice is that those of them that doesn't execute their project, they should not be given anything at all. See they execute those ones to make a provision for our law, for an empowerment and those projects and those and those uh, and those uh, constituency uh, 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 constituency money should go directly to the people, not from the senators. Because when you give them, they will give them peanuts. The EFCC Konyan say anybody will know say this 116 million naira, naim get them, make it show. Now the spokesperson of EFCC, Wilson Owujare, talk say the court don't knock order, give the commission. Say make them gather all the information on this money will come out for this public crime. And if for 21 days, Nobody can put hand say Naim get that money. Now government go collect the money. He gets one of my paddy we ask me one day whether he gets one big factory or one big company where they come out money for inside government. One minister go waka go in village, give them 50 scholarship. When you ask how he take duam, they go tell you, say, ah, now minister now, he get money. Now so the money they come out for the office. I've been wanting to enter office like this, money they come out for the grant. Every page of newspaper nine does they carry how one member of House of Repo, one senator, one politician he do empowerment project, or he get one thing when he do for a village or in constituency. Me, I won't ask EFCC. This matter go end when they forfeit the money when they cash them. When politician join body with contractor and the people with the government agency, they cheat country people, constantly they post as better people. What thing them they do? Waiting EFCC, they do them. When they watch, they wait for waiting to happen for this constituency project fraud matter. Hmm. 
My people now so we take end to day corruption to re. If you see something, I beg you, talk something. Before corruption go finish all of us pata pata. No still forget to say, now clean money will come up for inside honest true hustle. Now it's sweet to chop a parcel. My name, now Ufu Ma Eguria say. Now bye bye you.